Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brent Maudu, and I'm the CEO of Envision It Interactive. Uh, before we get started, I'd like you guys to click on the little hand icon to identify that you can hear me, just so that I know. Excellent. I'll just put all your hands down, and then we'll get started. We have a lot of uh, topics to cover today in terms of LinkedIn, so I'm going to jump right in. Um, first of all, my name is Brent Mondu. I'm the CEO of Envision It Interactive. We're a local specialized firm that creates internet presences on all mediums, web, mobile, and social media. Today we're talking about the social media aspect of your business, and more particularly about LinkedIn, getting to grow your business with LinkedIn. Very important topic, very high in demand, and a lot of people use LinkedIn on an ongoing basis to connect and to network, and we're going to look at LinkedIn and how to really leverage using LinkedIn for your networking, for growing your business, and for getting key contacts to expand. Uh, if any of you guys use Twitter, guys or girls, uh, use Twitter, feel free to use the hashtag pound grow social. It's right there in the middle of your screen um, to talk on there. If you have questions throughout the webinar, feel free to ask them whenever you wish. They are being collected by a team of social media, uh, my social media team on my side, and they will be presented to me. The format will be uh, a 45-minute webinar and followed by 15 minutes of questions at the end. All right, so let's get started. Let's dive right in. I have a few slides to talk about uh, LinkedIn uh, briefly. Uh, why LinkedIn? Uh, well, as of this year, LinkedIn has 200 million active users, and every second, two new users are signing up to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the fastest evolving social network for businesses and for business transactions. Last year, there were 5.7 billion searches performed on LinkedIn, and this year there's anticipated to be 12.6 billion searches uh, to be expected, that's more than double the growth. And that's based upon the data that's been to date. So if it continues to accelerate, those numbers will be even higher. All of these statistics were taken directly from LinkedIn and their disclosures as a result of them being a public company. None of these stats are made up or taken from public websites that may or may not have uh, used this data for their advantages, uh, just skewing data. So um, almost four out of every five users, 79% of the users are older than 35, uh, four out of five of them are business decision makers. So these are the types of people that are perfect to network with on an ongoing basis. They are the people making the decisions on a day-to-day -day basis for their business. Some of the statistics, and uh, I dug deep into this, I questioned it myself, were pretty surprising. Average household incomes uh, in Canada is $100,000, and in the United States it's $86,000. And I've even figured out the statistics regarding how many Canadians and Americans use the site? Seven million Canadians today, still less than one out of four, and 74 million in the U.S. as well. This is a surprising number because that shows even how much more potential growth there is there. One out of three users use the site daily, and two out of three users use the site weekly. Those are very surprising stats as well. Um, it's becoming more and more vital as, as part of people's networking and, and capabilities in terms of marketing. In terms of benefits, just want to cover these off because many people already know these, but some people won't have thought of using it in these regards. Uh, it obviously offers better communication. It gives you a chance to improve your brand image. It gives your company a chance to have more transparency. The next one I've seen and witnessed myself with the companies that I run, it improves staff morale. It's difficult for executives or, or company owners to make sure that all of their staff are up to date on everything that's happening on an ongoing basis, down to the you know small accomplishments and, and whatnot. Uh, it, it seems overburdensome at times. And so social media has been a very easy way, once you integrate it and you start broadcasting that stuff, for your staff to stay in the loop on certain topics you might not talk about on a day-to-day -day basis and or on that level. So it, it tends to get rid of some of that quote-unquote um, bureaucracy or level-oriented um, management hierarchies in, inside businesses, so it helps to improve staff morale. 
uh, better leadership as well. One of the surprising uh, benefits I've seen with companies I've worked with is as part of social media in general and as part of LinkedIn, the more that you do there, the, the more you get to understand it, the more you talk about your business, the more it forces you to think about your two to five year strategy and it, it forces you to think about how you're going to continue to lead. So it, it actually forces some quote unquote homework upon yourself to help improve your business. Connecting with, uh, you can connect with customers, employees, investors, suppliers, that's just a few examples. The sky truly is the limit. Favorite features. Now this slide, uh, what LinkedIn did was take a look at the top three features that individuals use on LinkedIn. And so if they use groups, people you may know and who viewed you, their, their stats would be reflected in these. Groups came out on top. Groups is the top used feature on LinkedIn. Then searching for people. People you may know, who has viewed you, company information, home page, and who knows who. Now why is this important? Why do we care what are the most used features on LinkedIn? It's simple. And the reason for that is as follows. If you know where people are and what they're doing and how they're using the service, it makes sense for you to also focus your time there. You're going to maximize your exposure. So I put together the same slide, but with a couple of the solutions to what you should be doing to make sure you maximize your exposure. And they are self-explanatory. And it seems like a very basic topic. These are upfront topics, but it's very, very important. Groups are the most used feature on LinkedIn, so use them. People are searching a lot, as you saw. In fact, more than double this year. So make sure you fill in your profile. And we'll be covering that topic, including some hands-on demonstrations as well. People you may know. Take time to connect with the people you may know. Take time to create those connections. Um, the more people that know you, the more people that uh, you get to know on an ongoing basis, the more opportunities that will be exposed to you. Who's been viewing you? Well, when people view you and you can see that information, it becomes very powerful. You can sit there and consider how they're viewing you or why they're viewing you and, and potentially uh, you know in some instances. Um, but in other instances, it, it gives you an opportunity to say, hey, I noticed you viewed my profile, um, or it gives you a chance to look at their business and potentially come back to them. It gives you an opportunity to talk to them, not just from a cold lead perspective, not knowing them. You don't know them, but it gives you an opportunity to create that connection. It gives you a reason. Uh, company information. People are looking at it, and that's one of the fastest growing features on LinkedIn. So make sure that you engage with your followers. Make sure you fill in the information on your company pages. Homepage. Homepage is another one of the features that LinkedIn is spending a lot of time on. And I'm, I'm pretty confident as well that Facebook and other services are going to be revitalizing their homepages as well this year uh, in a drastic way. It is where all of the information goes through. It's an information hub. Make sure you start sharing your activity updates on LinkedIn, like you would on Facebook or on Twitter if you've used them. And if you've used no social media channels to date, don't worry about that, because I will be showing you how that's done later. And who knows whom? A great way to find new connections. If you look at um, profiles on, on, on LinkedIn and you're, you're considering potentially doing business with someone, it's very powerful if you can get an introduction or get a recommendation. And those are all features of LinkedIn that is capable to be used on an ongoing basis. Primary uses. This is another slide that I'm going to spend less than a minute on. I, I just want you guys to consider each and every way that you could use LinkedIn on an ongoing basis. These are all ways that we've used it. These are ways that our clients have used it. These are the most pro popular primary uses of LinkedIn. So you can use it to spend time to research companies and people, perhaps before you hire them, perhaps before you approach them to potentially do business. It pays to know about them and know about their products and services and what's happening in their companies before you talk to them and, and potentially even learn some of their pain points. Reconnect with past, past business associates. If you worked at a previous company, 
Uh, there may be con contacts or colleagues that you could connect with that could lead to other business opportunities. Build new relationships that may influence potential customers. Now this one is um, a little confusing the way it's worded, but what it really means is you may connect with someone that may not be a client of yours and may not ever be a client of yours, but they can influence others that may become a client of yours. Someone in a, a role that works with a lot of businesses on an ongoing basis, such as the Ottawa Chamber of Commerce, building those relationships with uh, your chambers of commerce and, and your connections throughout town. Nice plug there, but it's true. Can lead you to getting referrals for other business, and it's very important, and it's not limited to just that. Uh, you can use it to increase your face-to-face -face networking effectiveness. Connecting with someone on LinkedIn after you've met with them helps them to remember who you are, your face. When, when people go out to networking events, they meet dozens of people, so oftentimes it's difficult to remember and, and maintain that connection. LinkedIn helps you to do that, but not just that. It helps you to stay up to date on what they're up to and, and what things are happening in their business, in their careers, et cetera, so that um, should the opportunity arise for you to communicate with them, you know when's best and, and you know when opportunities present themselves. You can jump in right at that point. I've used it a number of times to uncover potential opportunities. There's tons of times where someone will post something and, and it brings up a pain point in their business. And uh, from, from my perspective, I might be able to reach out and say, I can help you with that. Or maybe I can't help directly, but I can give them some advice on, on something else and people appreciate that. With the new features and functionalities in terms of companies, you can improve your branding, your marketing presence. And in turn, it'll also help your search engine optimization, which is not a topic we're covering today. Um, it's a topic on its own, but it would help you in terms of where you rank on search engines when people are searching for your company based on keywords. And of course, you can generate identifiable business opportunities just by staying up to date on what's happening in the businesses surrounding you. Now, before I go on to the next slide, I just wanted to run a, ask everyone a question. I want to know if your companies use LinkedIn on an ongoing basis for your business. So I've opened up a poll for you guys to view. And I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, seconds to answer that, and then I'm going to display the results. All right, so I'm going to just display those results. So as you can see, uh, many companies have benefited and used it for um, ongoing marketing efforts, not, not necessarily benefited from it, used it for ongoing marketing efforts. Um, many have not as well. So it's a very mixed bunch. OK. I'll hide that poll. And right before we go to the next one as well, out of the ones that did answer that they have used it, I'd like to ask you to answer the question. Has LinkedIn helped to increase your company exposure? I will also share this result as well because I want anyone who hasn't done this to check the potential. And I want anyone who has to share their honest opinions. We can all learn from this. And I'll close that up and I'll share that. So almost half have seen that it's helped them to grow their business, have seen that it's helped them to increase their business exposure. And almost half have no clue. And, and that may boil down to not even having a plan, not knowing how to measure. It could be a number of things. It also could be uh, a company that hasn't allocated enough time for someone to dedicate a bit of time to take a look and, and understand how to see if they are getting results. It may not just be incorporated into your company processes. There's a number of reasons. All right, so back to the slides. So here's what we're going to look at today. There's a lot here. It's going to go through, sorry, I'm going to go through the personal profile, the groups, the jobs, the companies, the ads, and the paid accounts sections of LinkedIn. I won't cover every single topic today. I'm going to cover a lot of the most important topics. There's even more that I've, I've chosen to leave out of this because it's only a 45-minute webinar with a 15-minute uh, session afterwards for questions and answers. Um, but I have a lot of information that I think will 
help each and every one of you in one way or another. So completing your personal profile. Some of this is, is basic, so this one will be a very quick one. But post your best profile picture, of course, obviously. When, you, when someone searches and there's a search result, if uh, they see uh, 100 little images of people, their eyes are going to be drawn to the one that, that, that pulls them in. So you can experiment with that. Think like a search engine. So when you write up your profile descriptions and whatnot, don't just write, here's who I am, here's what I do. Uh, after you're done that, just take a second to think, okay, well, what are my core business competencies? If it's accounting, did, did I include those words in there? Is it real estate? Did I include some of those words in there? Et cetera. Think value as well. So don't add in those words and then make your profile seem awkward. Like, hi, my name is Brent Mondu and I make web applications, web development. You know, just start loading in words that doesn't make sense within the sentence context. You have to take the time to balance that. Now, if you want the secret here, 5% or less of the words should be those keywords you're looking for. If it's more than that, it's actually going to hurt you in terms of search engine optimization. So if you have 100 words, five words. If five words should be what you're targeting. If you have 200 words, it should be 10 words, et cetera. And try not to write too long. It, it becomes a challenge. Try, try to take some time to share only the information that, that's essential. People won't sit there and read all day. Take the time to arrange your public profile and set up your skills carefully. And we're going to look at that in hands-on right now. What you don't do is don't just connect. Make sure you network. Most people that use LinkedIn, and many of you guys are going to laugh right now thinking it's, it's yourself, and it was me for a very long time, would connect with people but never network. They'd log in and their typical usage would be go in, look at your messages, no new messages I need to reply to, accept two connections and publicize an endorsement or two and then walk away. Your time on the site was one minute or less, maybe five minutes or less. And you wouldn't do more than that. And that's, that's unfortunate because you're not using it as a networking channel. You're using it just to create that connection. And that can still help, but it's a small percentage of what's possible. Don't include every job. Uh, if, you, if you had 13 jobs in your past and you're looking for, you know, if you're in a position that you own a business, Include the ones that, that make you look good, that, that show you the relevancy. Don't show that you, you uh, what, what you did uh, 20 years ago. It, it's no longer relevant. Uh, and don't think numbers. And, and I mean that in terms of how many connections you have and whatnot. Don't just accept everyone. I get, I probably get 50 requests from people from India each and every day trying to say, please offshore your work to me. Please offshore your work to me. Please offshore your work to me. Don't just connect with everyone. So let's jump right in there. I'm just going to pull that up. This is my LinkedIn homepage, and I wanted to show you a few of these features. So if I go to my profile right now, under profile, I go to edit. Uh, I'm not going to go through the basic stuff like post uh, your best picture and whatnot. I'm going to take a look and show you what I mean by certain little things so you understand them. So when I write my summary, it's, it's brief. It's a couple of paragraphs. It talks about my two core competencies which are unrelated, but it's the internet presence specialization that I've done for the last 14 years. And then it talks about my real estate expertise as well and real estate investment expertise. So, but it's still brief even though I talk about two core competencies. And it has a, it follows that keyword algorithm that I'm talking about to target and to help me on an ongoing basis. I've thought about search engine stuff and I've thought about value. Taking the time to arrange your profile, if I scroll down, you're going to see all these little sections and an arrow. You can drag these, and you can actually move where things are at. So if I move publications up, it's now at the top. But if I don't want that, I just go back down to my summary, and I can move that back up. And that's sometimes a challenge when, when I won't scroll for you. There we are. And so that's a simple way to rearrange it. Think about what people are going to want to see first. They're going to want to probably know a bit about you, your summary. A lot of people will spend time putting you know, the experience right up top or putting previous jobs and stuff like that right up at the top, their languages and whatnot. But it's not the first information that's important. So the other thing here that I wanted to show you was skills and why you need to set them up carefully. These are skills and expertise, and, and 
people can endorse you for them. Now, these endorsements, although they feel good, they don't help an insane amount because, as you can see from my numbers here, everyone's using it all the time because LinkedIn has, anytime you're viewing a profile, they're like, please endorse this person, please endorse this person. In fact, yesterday they announced they have now 1 billion endorsements on there. That's not the reason you use it, even though most social media marketing experts tell you that's the reason you use it. They're, they're not using it for the right reasons, in my opinion. The reason you use it is because if someone is looking for experience in a specific area and they search the site and you're associated to it and you have those endorsements, then it helps you show up higher in the search results on the site. But not just that, it also helps on your, your search engine rank. It also helps on all of those intangible stuff, but there's two other reasons it helps as well and they pertain to the group section, which I'll show you later. Um, but in the group section, uh, long story short, in the group section, uh, when you're looking for groups, so if, you, if you're looking at a specific skill, or someone's looking for a specific skill, you can see professionals that are in, uh, have identified themselves in there, so potential connections if you're looking for them. You can see related companies as well. Uh, that's the other one. And then you can see, groups. So it helps you to find groups that you may want to network in. Skills is in beta. It's been in beta for a long time, but it is becoming a more important part of the site and an easier way for people to find the information that they are looking for so that they can connect with the right groups and so that they can network on an ongoing basis. So. We're going to talk about connecting with individuals you meet, and it's a little bit of intangible stuff here too, like talking about your business processes. If you go out to a networking event and you come back with 20 business cards, you need to decide who you're going to try and connect with on LinkedIn. Most people put them aside. They don't really have a formal process, but every company should, and every business leader should. You should have a clear definition of what you want to do to follow, keeping in mind that you have 3,000 lifetime invites you can get over this though. If you reach that limit, you email LinkedIn, you tell them that you you don't know why you're out of, of invites and you want to invite people and they'll, they'll remove it. Just just write a professional email to them and they will remove it. But um, it's still a pain in the butt. So don't connect with everyone, but connect with the people based upon your strategy. You have to figure out that strategy. Now why do you connect with them? The following step is post status updates to stay fresh in their minds. I'll show you that again in the next part. And I'm also going to show you three other features that help you to network more effectively with LinkedIn. Uh, the ability to filter your network updates, the ability to set up saved searches, and the ability to export your connections, all very important features. So let's go hands on again. So we're back on the site, and I want to look at the profile again for a second. And so Brent Mondu here has a number of connections, and these connections impact a number of things, such as people I may know. And so it might show me connections of their connections and whatnot. So now connections here. Sorry. Under contacts, the connections here take time to load for me because of the number of connections I have and sometimes I get an error. So it may or may not happen here. It's outside of my control. It's a, a LinkedIn issue. And so sometimes I have to reload like this. It's kind of interesting. But they are working on that. All right. We'll give that a second. And I'm going to go back to the profile for a second or just the home page actually. This is what I was going to show you first. So on the home page right here, I can share a status update. Where do these status updates go? Why would I do this? What good is it? These status updates are what show up here. See, this is my home page. This is everyone else's home page too. So if they share something, if I share something, it ends up on their wall, just like it's their, the things they share send, end up on my wall or the things they do. And this is why it's so important. And this is why it's important to have a plan to share on a regular basis. 
if you go to a networking event, you talk to someone, you call them or email them back once, maybe twice, and then they drop off and you have no connection with them. They may forget about you. When the time comes they need your products or services, they may not even remember you. Or someone else that may have been uh, a decent fit should, uh, may, may grab that business that you otherwise might have. Um, so the, let's try again that connection area. Perfect. They loaded this time. Thank you. So in here, this is your connections. Now, the reason I show you this is there's a great feature in here that enables you to export your connections. You scroll down, and it's right here. And why would you want to do this? You can export it in a number of formats. Again, this will take too long for me to export because I have a long list. But let's just click export for a second and see what it gives me. Uh, this this, this uh, robot thing. They make it challenging to do a presentation without interruptions. So your connections were successfully exported. What it will do is it will download a file for me of all of my connections. If I go back to connections, though, I just exported all of them. I could actually select the ones I want, or I could filter by just, I just want to contact my Ottawa area people, my Ottawa area connections. So I've got 459, and I can go and export only 459. Why would you do this? Well, presumably most of the companies I'm talking with today uh, have email lists. You have email programs that you send out a newsletter. You have um, opportunities to participate in charitable events and whatnot, and you want to get some involvement. This is a very easy way to get those connections. Now, you, you'll probably want to filter through them once you get them down and say, OK, do I really want to contact all of these people? But this is a very good and very easy way to make sure that, A, you get all those connections, emails, email addresses, and you can update them and send them out on an ongoing basis, but also uh, keep your other marketing initiatives integrated with your social media. And you start to benefit again from that. Social media works very well to gain business, but email and, and direct email marketing also works very well and, and works better for some types of people. So it's very important to do these types of steps. On the home page again, I'll go back there since now I, I was able to show you that component. There is a drop down list here that enables you to filter your updates. The reason I want, you to, want to show you this is because as you use LinkedIn more and more and you have more connections and more groups that you've joined, it starts to become challenging because that all these updates that are showing, it goes too quickly and it's hard for you to see. So you can filter, I just want my group updates. I just want to see what's happening in the groups that I've joined. And so you can filter based upon the groups. Or you can filter based upon, so you can decide how you're going to spend your time and filter very quickly. Now I have some hidden ones as well. You can actually customize how it works on an ongoing basis by clicking that hidden button. I, I'm not going to go through that today. I, I don't have time to, but because uh, they, they have a, a wall in place that will um, force you to log in each and every time you go to do a change on your profile. Um, but this helps you to filter those updates so you can take a look at what matters to you. And you can also take a look at uh, what's known as saved searches as well. And by saved searches, you can um, save searches in here. Now, you're limited to three if you don't have a paid account. I'm, I'm, I'm not limited as many because I have a, a paid account. We'll go through those after as well. Okay, so back to the presentation. Recommendations, I'm not going to show hands-on. It's fairly simple. Uh, there's only a few rules to follow. Don't mass email. Don't go in there and, and email everyone and say, hey, can you give me a recommendation? Doesn't work. You'll get zero almost all the time. Maybe you'll get one or two. Uh, take the time to email the individual one by one. Describe what you want in terms of a recommendation and ensure minimal work. Now, by ensuring minimal work, what I mean by that is write what you're expecting in the recommendation, or write what you'd like to see in the recommendation. Give them permission to change it, but do the work for them. Even write the recommendation and send it to them and say, this is what I think you'd say. You can change it however you wish, though. I just wanted to save you some time. If you make it easy for them to perform a recommendation for you um, and, and take the time to do that, everyone's busy. Everyone wants to help everyone else, but everyone's busy. So they put it aside. They say, OK, later. But then they forget about it. If you make it really easy, chances are, you're going to get a lot better success rate, and, and we have as well. 
on the groups. So groups being the most used feature on LinkedIn. Before I, I actually go through and, and do the online stuff, let's uh, run another poll. I'd like you to ask. I'd like to ask you to answer the poll. Um, those of you who have used LinkedIn, do you actively use groups? I'll just close that and show it. I know some people didn't have time to answer. I apologize. Um, so here's the result. It's very close to a 50-50, but more people have not used groups than have used groups to help grow. Now, there's a lot of reasons why groups are really good to help you grow your business, but there's also a lot of reasons why or how you could use groups that, that won't help your business. So I wanted to go through it and um, hands-on to show you it and show you how to use it and how not to use it. So first of all, you have to find the groups that you want to join. And be warned, you're limited to joining 50 groups. You can't join 51. If you want to join a 50 first, they're going to ask you to leave another group and then join that one. 50 groups is more than enough. I'm probably in the 20 to 30 group range right now. So um, I've tried groups. I've left groups. If they don't work, I'm, I, I remove myself from them. If they're not working for me, if they're not the right channels, uh, if they're not. And some, some of them I, I enter seasonally. So if I'm doing work with a charity, I might join their group and then uh, after six months, if it dies out, I might leave the group and then come back later. So the steps are, are simple. Before you join a group, review the group stats, and we'll do that hands-on, and read the group rules if they are present. And so some groups have rules and some groups don't. It's important to read them because it, it's important for you to understand if that group can help you or not, or if that group has, you know, is a broadcast type group where you're allowed to read our stuff, but you can't post and stuff like that. And this is a key word, inbound marketing, leverage it. What inbound marketing is is simply this. Don't go on there and say, buy my product, buy my product, buy my product. If you're going to contribute to groups, contribute by adding value, contribute by asking questions, contribute by responding to others, and contribute by sharing interesting information, including if you write a blog that's relevant to that group. That's one of the ways that I've gained a lot of my business through the group's functionality is sharing a blog. Just uh, a couple of days ago, I shared one that I wrote about mobile markets and how the mobile markets are growing so quickly. And we got we scored two new contracts just as a result of the leads that came out of that. And the leads just came out of that because they were talking back and forth and uh, then decided to contact me and said, you know what, I'm, I'm looking for a quote for, I believe one of them was an iPhone app and the other one was something else. So um, it works. But it won't work day one. It takes time. And it takes time for you to understand and gain that momentum. All right, so back to LinkedIn, and we're going to go off to the group section. So here's the group section. Uh, it'll show my groups, but there is also the ability for me to search for other groups. So here's my groups. There's probably about 30 of them. And the stats are easy. You can go into any group. So let's go into the Ottawa Chamber of Commerce. And the stats used to be really easy to see, but now you have to go under more because they just keep adding options. It's right here, group stats. And these are public. Anyone can see them. And you can click it right there. And what it does is it shows you, OK, does this group have like three members, 300 members, 3,000 members? Or some groups even have 320,000 members. Well, we all know a group that's active with quality people, not a group that's like uh, how to email market spam and there's 300,000 members. Well, but you're not going to have a quality audience. Don't waste your time on it. So some of it's your own common sense. But this is very important for you to look at, not just the numbers. So there's an active number of members in there, but potentially geographical areas if you work in a specific geographical area, or the types of seniority if, if they're primarily owners or, or whatnot. So there is more stats underneath. The growth history, you can see the growth trends. You can see, is the group active? Most, most groups, you'll see um, they're not active, and, so, and they're not growing. And so you're like, you'll, you'll know maybe it's not worth spending the time looking at this group. So it's really important to take a look at these stats. And then you can take a look at the activities. How many discussions are happening in the last week and whatnot? Don't join groups that aren't active. Don't join groups that don't have engagement. And don't join groups that don't have quality people. Now, that sounds pretty obvious. 
but the way that they hide those stats underneath the drop-down menu, most users don't even know that stats option exists. And the group rules, it's an option over here usually if that group has group rules defined. I, I know there are some groups that I've joined that have that option. I don't remember which ones though. So let me just click on a few and see. I'd hate to waste your time while I do that though. So I saw one yesterday and it was a good example and I did not write it down. Take my word for it, it's over here, it's called group rules. It just pops up, it's a whole set of instructions. So that's about it. And here you can also start discussions, you can share a poll, you can share a blog with a link to your blog. Um, the possibilities are limitless. So my example of how I use it is, let's say I write a blog about social media. I'll go to this page and I will look at the groups that have to do with social media, and I'll decide if I want to post in those. There's four, four results on this page. I can go through and find them. And I'll decide if I want to post it there, but I'll also look at the group to make sure that A, it follows their rules, and B, it's going to be well received. So, you know, I'm writing a blog anyhow, so I might as well share it on my social media channels so that I have an audience. If you, if you are spending time building marketing materials, you want people to see it. This is free, free exposure for you. Now here's another benefit that most people don't know about, which is really cool. If you wanted to contact someone, but you're not connected with them, you could ask a friend to introduce you to them. You could request their connection, but if they refuse it and you get too many of those refusals, you'll no longer be permitted on LinkedIn to request connections. You have to wait for them to connect with you. Well, that kind of defeats the purpose of the effectiveness of LinkedIn, doesn't it? Well, alternately, you can join a group. You go to their profile, you see what groups they're in, you join the same group. And then when you go to email them, an option shows up that says, we're in the same group, and you choose the group. Now you can email them directly without a paid feature, without creating that connection, without asking for a recommendation or an introduction. It's a magnificent trick to be able to contact leads that you want. Of course, you still have to follow standard business etiquette. People don't like to be cold called or cold emailed and whatnot, and it might take, might be a challenge to get them to contact you, um, but the capabilities are there when you have an important opportunity. All right, so back to groups. Things that you can do in a group. Create a search plan. Start and join discussions. Like, comment, and share on statuses. So, um, if you see a, stat, a, a, a post in a group and you like it, just press the like button. It, or if you want to comment on it, comment on it. By doing that, you create those connections. By doing that, you contribute and you inject yourself into the conversations. People get to know you. You become an authority in those groups. Or share it. When you share it, people appreciate it too. So if it's a genuinely good post, it can actually help your other marketing efforts, your other social media initiatives. Now, job listings is a paid feature. It's under companies. But if you are using it, if you are a company that is, uh, has been leveraging the job functionalities of LinkedIn, which is about $300 a post, you can cross-post those job listings into groups that you're a member of. It's awesome. It's great. It increases your exposure to that entire group that you want to target. And they may have connections that uh, might be looking for a job that could help fill your job. Once again, leverage inbound marketing. I, I already said that in the previous slide. So some tips. Follow people in groups. If you find someone posts something particularly interesting, take the time to follow them. There's an option called follow, and I'll show you that in a second. Follow them. Why? Because they're going to show up more every time you go to that group. If they've posted recently, they're going to show up first, and then you know you already like the content. You're not looking for it. I've already told you the trick to join groups to email non-connection. If you're not connected to someone, you can email them by joining the group that they're in. You can consider creating groups, because there are some benefits to it, but I'm not going to cover them today. The benefits basically are that you can mass email your group membership, but there are costs too. If you don't have an active group, if you're not participating, if you're not fostering a strong community, it's not going to help your business, it's going to hurt it. So let's go back to hands-on here. So in groups, Again, we'll go back to the Ottawa Chamber of Commerce. 
you can follow people right here. There's the follow link right there. That simple. If you like a comment, or you, or if you like what they've posted, or you want to comment on it, again, it's right there. Or you can follow that particular comment. So there are other options as well. But um, those are the important ones to start engaging. And of course, you can share just like the status update I showed you on your profile as well. That's it's that simple. All right. Jobs. I'm not going to show a hands-on on this. Some of the companies will be using this. Some won't. If you've used the job board before, it's pretty much self-explanatory. I'm just going to give you a couple of things to think about. Of course, you can use to recruit new talent. And then you can cross-post those jobs into the company's area, the group's area, et cetera. But you can also expose opportunities. You can see who's hiring. If someone's hiring for marketing, chances are they're going to be looking for promotional goods. What if you sell promotional goods? If they're hiring an accountant, maybe they need some financial services and whatnot. And uh, that exposes opportunities as well. You really have to think about, can this feature benefit my type of business where I have products or services? If it can, by all means, search for jobs. You can save those searches. And you can even automate those searches as well. So uh, again, that option, clicking on save search, there's a whole lot of options underneath there. I won't be showing hands on on that. But it's there for you to explore. You can set it up by regions. You can set it up by keywords. Uh, there's a whole lot of criteria you can do. It, it, then it sends you an email. Now you don't even have to go in there and remember to look at this. You get an email, you look at it for one minute, and you figure out if there's an opportunity you want to pursue. But you don't do it off the cuff. Make sure you have a plan. On to company pages. One of the features that LinkedIn is going to work aggressively to grow in the next year as a result of seeing the success that Facebook has had from their company pages. They've just started. I mean, it's been there for about a year, but they've just started getting some momentum, and it's still fairly new. But it does create a lot of opportunities for you know, companies to start now. Start now while the momentum's on hot. Get that momentum and, and start benefiting from it. So you can create a profile. And like your individual profile, you can share status updates on there. Now, if you're already doing this for other marketing initiatives like Facebook or Twitter, it works almost done for you. You just have to copy and paste the status updates in here, too. You can create products and product descriptions or services. Uh, and you can post careers or post job listings, which is a paid feature. If you do decide to leverage company pages, make sure that it's part of your process to your engagement processes or your processes in your company so that you don't put it up there, people comment or people like things, and then you never respond or you respond five days later. It's very important that you take the time to, to do that. And you can also find other companies and follow them and engage with them as well on an ongoing basis and see what's happening in them. So let's go hands on again for this. So under companies, I've got a number of companies under here. So let's just look at my own. So there's a lot of features in here. Uh, they've been changing it aggressively. There's the ability to upload what's known as one of the cover images right here. You can create your own. Try and make it you know, complementary to your business so it matches everything else. You can see updates that I've posted. I, I, I typed them in here, and I shared a link. But you can see updates that I've posted uh, in order to, um, for, for my audience to see. Uh, but another side benefit of this, I mentioned it earlier, that, that whole search engine optimization term, it helps Google and other search engines when they're indexing you to know what type of business and services you're in, and it helps your search engine rank. You can also configure products and product information. So products, you can come in and, and configure them all. And you can see how many people have viewed them. And you can uh, describe each one of them one by one. And by doing that, they can read them and take a look at you know, the description of your products and services. There's keywords you can configure. There's a whole lot of features and functionalities in the company page. And of course, you can request recommendations from your clients as well. And then there's insights in here for a company page as well. Now there's a whole ad section. 
Now, every time I cover this topic, I usually have the same questions that start to pop up. Why would I pay for ads? Or I'm doing very good with my non-paid campaigns, and, and I thought social media was free, and, and this, that, and the other thing. There's, there's a lot of reasons for uh, using ads. We use both paid and unpaid marketing techniques here at Envision It. I also use it for my real estate investment firm, Amplified Investments. And I can tell you one thing. Why do I use paid ads? Because they work. They work um, oftentimes even better. Oftentimes even better than the non-paid ads. Non-paid ads tend to get uh, a whole eclectic variety of inquiries from, you know, uh, like I said, some, sometimes a company will use the inquiry forms from India to try and get us to outsource. So that's an example. And the best thing about ads is you can target your ads. You can create an ad and you can say, I want to target only Ottawa companies um, and I want to uh, target only decision makers. You can do it down to that level. You can do it down to that level in Facebook as well, even further level in Facebook. But in LinkedIn, this is their first step and I've I'm anticipating in the next year there's going to be much more targeting capabilities in LinkedIn. It's worth getting familiar with now and staying on top of it. Um, the hard sale approach tends not to work as well. Um, obviously, you can, you can talk about your products or services and link to your site. That's the approach that I take. You can use uh, white papers, ebooks, or free trials and whatnot. Um, but, but don't just come out and be uh, a hard sale aggressive approach and, and don't, people are, are there to network and whatnot, that hard sale approach won't work very, very well. But be direct and be specific. And, and what I mean by that is if you're selling, if you're selling accounting services and your ad has to do with something that's obscure, like um, don't know how to manage your money, question mark, and you click on it, you're not really sure what type of site you're getting to. Well, why, why do that? I, I trick people. I'm getting more clicks. Well, but you're not going to get more business. They don't even know what they're clicking to go to. So don't waste your own money. Be specific. Make sure your ads are clear and concise. If you have, even if you don't have a design department, get someone to crop and zoom your images. Don't use just whatever image you have and upload it and let it be skewed or let it be so small people can't see it or people can't draw their eye to it make sure you crop and zoom your images. Make sure it looks good and make sure people want to click it because if not, they won't understand it. It, it might make you look low quality even if you're not. And test different ads. The, the, each campaign you can create 50 ads. You can just set them up and you can change the way that the ads look. Um, and they're going to run there, sorry, LinkedIn is going to run those ads in a round robin campaign. And by doing that, they're going to decide which ads to, um, to show based on wh what your most successful click-through rate is. And if your click-through rate goes below that number there on the screen, that's less than you know, two in a thousand clicks or so, uh, they're not going to show your ads. They're just not going to because they're not making money off you as well. It's, it's a win-win situation. You don't want ads that don't get clicks either anyhow because you're not making money. So. And take the time to optimize your ads. Bid at the higher end of your suggested range. Continuously review and adjust the daily budget. Create several targeted campaigns. And make sure you include calls to action. So contact us today. Um, and then, of course, customize your landing pages. What a landing page is, is if you're looking at web design, don't send them to your home page. If, if you have a, a page that's specific to web design, send them there. If, you're, if you have six products and you're marketing a product, send them to that product page. Make sure you send them to the page you want them to take the action on. And if you can, if you have a technology team, make sure you send them to a page that will track how many clicks you're getting through those so that you can know, yes, it's working, or no, it's not working at all. Very, very important. Now, I have hands-on here. Uh, I'm not going to show the ads hands-on today, uh, unfortunately. This was intended for a longer presentation, so the hands-on component of this I won't be showing. But if you have experience with ads, uh, it, it's much simpler than Google Ads, setting those up. Um, it's, it's a fairly simple process. I, I urge you to take a look at it and get some help walking through it if you don't, if you don't actually have an experience. Here's some, ex some features that will help your, web, your, your LinkedIn presence get to the next level. On your profile, you can customize 
the addresses, and I'm going to show you that. But you can also optimize your profile for search, like I said, with the text and the keywords. But what I'm going to show you enables you to change the, the link name so you're not just putting in the web links. And, and most people, some people know this feature, some people don't, but it, it will help with your search engine optimization rate. But include your LinkedIn profiles in perhaps your email signature like I do, perhaps your website like I do, perhaps your marketing materials like I do. I have my LinkedIn presence in a number of different areas and it gets a lot of traffic as a result of it and I get a lot of connections as a result of it. There are two areas and this presentation will be made available for you. You don't have to sit there and try and write down these URLs. Uh, you can watch it again at your own convenience. Uh, it'll be available on YouTube to watch when you wish and Ottawa Chamber of Commerce will send it out. Um, so check out these profile badges and check out the website integration plugins. Those ones you may need help with your technology team to get integrated. Um, and if you don't have a technology team to support you, we, we can help you with that as well. Um, but take, those, take the time to look at those because integrating those can help you in your ongoing efforts. So let me show you those URLs. I'm going to go back to my profile and edit profile. So here's the profile. You can change the URL that goes to your LinkedIn profile right here. So ca.linkedin and you just click edit. Now this section has a lot of stuff and sometimes overwhelming. You can choose what sections of your profile you want shown. Like I, I took out projects, I took out websites here and I took out interested and interested in is like business opportunities or whatnot. People, people can figure that out and I took out I tried to make it as streamlined as possible. And your URL is here. If you've set it up already, you probably won't be able to change it. I, I won't be able to change it. But if not, you can set it up here. Now, there's a whole other section. If I go to my profile again, under here, contact info, that has links and whatnot right here. These are website links, and you can configure these um, right in your profile. So if you go to the edit profile, you can configure them, edit contact info, and then there's a little edit button. It's kind of hidden, edit profile, edit contact info, and edit. Now if you notice, most people would say, oh, it's my company site. But then you don't get to name it. It's just going to show a link like this. So company website. But you can actually say other and give it a name. I'll fix that again after, but that's an example of customizing these links. The words Ottawa Real Estate Investing, now if someone searches that on Google, chances are I'm going to come up much higher because this is going to help my rank. It's that, that simple. That's one of the criteria that Google uses for that. So go back here. Are premium accounts worth it? Uh, well, here's, what, here's the main features. The first two are the most important. Actually, the first three. You can know who views your profile, and you can know more of who views your profile and, and see unlimited back historically. Open link lets anyone on LinkedIn message you if you enable that feature. So um, Bob's not connected to me, but Bob wants to do business with me. If I enable open link, he can contact me regardless. That's, that's really awesome. InMail allows me, guarantees me, three contacts per month. Uh, to be able to send emails to three people who I want and it guarantees me that they will get back to me. Otherwise, they give me my, um, my credit back, my in-mail credit. And those credits build up over time. So if you don't use them that month, they carry forward up to a maximum of, I think, 15 for my account type. There are other account types, uh, but mine's just the premium accounts. There's some specific for job posts and stuff like that. Also, I get more introductions than a non-paid account, more safe searches, and I get the ability to search for references. So if I'm trying to hire someone, I can actually search to see if anyone else has done business and contact them and do reference searches and stuff like that, which is really useful. So th that's it for the presentation portion. I have lots of questions that have already come in. It's going to take me a minute or two to organize some of the questions. I have uh, some questions coming in right now. Uh, but if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me them, and I'm going to go through them. Uh, Okay, so here's some of the basic ones here. Uh, can anyone see my profile? Um, members outside your network 
we'll only see a shortened profile without you name that top portion of it. Um, but you can configure that in your settings. This, the area I just went to where I was enabling and disabling those links, there's an option in there that allows you to set what can be seen. Your email address can only be seen by uh, first degree connections. So. Uh, good question. Uh, you didn't mention profile applications. I didn't go into profile applications for a number of reasons, but mainly because they've been discontinued by LinkedIn. They're being removed. You may still have some on your page, but they are being removed as you speak. In fact, if you go into the FAQ, they've been removed uh, and will be removed on an ongoing basis. How do I remove a connection? Uh, under connections, on the right-hand side, there's an option, remove connection. And you can go through that process. I won't show that process during uh, the workshop, but uh, that's where you would go to take a look at that. Hmm. Uh, I noticed that others can see when I viewed their profile. Can I control that? There are settings under privacy controls that enable you to identify one of three ways as to how they can view you. It, you could say Brent Mondu from Envisionit, or it could be someone from Envisionit, so they know someone from Envisionit viewed them. Or I could set myself private altogether. Um, you can actually enable or disable that as you wish. So you might want it always enabled, except for when you're doing a massive amount of research and you don't want everyone knowing you're looking at their profiles. Um, I guess if you're like on, on the job hunt or something. So. Um, I have a recommendation I don't really like. I don't know what to do. Um, well, don't publish it. <laughs> That's an easy one. Uh, but you can go back and ask for revisions. Uh, or if you've already published it, uh, under, I think it's edit profile. I, I know it's possible. Um, you go to where the recommend recommendations are, and you can click on, I don't remember the option, it's like manage or something like that, and you can uncheck the recommendations you want to hide. It's that simple. Uh, Lisa asked me as well here. Sorry, I'm saying names. I shouldn't be saying names. Uh, someone asked me uh, if you can set up groups with that's confidential. No, you cannot. Uh, but you can set up a group that's private. Uh, but the stats are public. So it's, it's a public feature of LinkedIn. After sending a message to someone in your group, in order to invite them, I think you need their email address. Um, it, after sending a message to someone in your group in order to invite them. I don't understand the question, unfortunately. Um, when you create a group, you can invite your own connections. Or yes, you can invite people via email addresses as well. Following someone does not work the same as Twitter exactly. Following someone within a group, it just shows their information more prominently on the feeds and whatnot. So, What's better on Twitter profile? Direct people to LinkedIn or website? Each of my social media profiles direct people to my website. My website directs people out to the channels if they want to use them. The most important thing to understand is not everyone's going to use every channel. So while I'm comfortable on all of them, Jennifer may be comfortable only with LinkedIn. And Bob may only be comfortable with Twitter. So it's very important for you to understand that because your customer base and your target customer base is not going to be everywhere. And they're not going to engage with you everywhere. And that's why it's important not to put all your eggs in one basket and only be on one social media channel. You need to be on, on many of them. LinkedIn is the best one for B2B as well, by the way. Sorry, I'm clicking the wrong window. I'm, I'm trying to scroll through other questions that are coming in. Very good question. One of the questions I was asked is if I will lose a re written recommendation if I disconnect from someone. I honestly don't know. I don't think you will, but I don't know. So that's something I'm going to have to research. I thought I would bring it up so that you didn't think I was ignoring your question. Um, some group specific questions just came in. Is it possible to send a message to everyone in the group? No, only if you own the group. You can send a message to everyone in the group. And it also limits you as to how many messages. I think it's like two a month or something like that. They don't want it to be used for spam. They're going to they're gonna keep those enforcements there as well. 
I've tried but can't add a company page. I don't have enough details to know why you can't add a company page. Um, but I know there's a, a number of predecessing requirements. Um, it'll ask you for your email address. It'll ask you for that your profile's like more than half complete, I believe, and you must have some connections and whatnot. If you're a new account, it's going to be hard to set up a company page. You're going to have to make sure your profile's set up and you have some stuff in there. So. We are out of time. There are more questions. I apologize. If you want your questions answered, you can feel free to email me. My email address is on the screen. I thank everyone for attending today's webinar, and I hope that you've all gotten a lot of value out of it. I'd like to thank the Ottawa Chamber of Commerce for hosting the webinar as well. If you want to find out more information about our Social Media Superhero Program, uh, the link is there uh, in front of you. It's betterwebsites.ca slash SMS. Um, thank you, and have a good afternoon.